This video will go over lots of things from WoW's earliest development, about ideas and plans for Vanilla WoW, as well as answer some mysteries people have had about the game. In WoW's earliest alpha, it was possible to kill AFK players by placing a campfire under their feet, which would slowly kill them due to fire damage. So they then changed it so a player created fire could do no damage. Early plans for quests included having cross-continental journey quests at around level 40, since they thought people would want to explore with their new mounts and go to far off places, since back in Vanilla WoW you got your first mount at level 40. But that ended up being a terrible idea as all that travel time was just downtime, so they cut them to smaller areas, and only left a few massive journey quests in the game like the Call of Water quest for Shaman's Water Totems, for example. The Dwarven Airfield was made to just have something neat to look at while on a flight path. Apparently, Blizzard put a lot of things like this in the game for the sole purpose of just adding flavor to flight paths, since flight paths were a new thing to MMOs at the time, leaving long time speculation about why the airfield was up in a hidden area, and if Blizzard maybe scrapped it because they ran out of time to finish it, to rest. Turns out, it was just there for funsies, because someone thought it might look neat. When thinking of what to do for the vanilla cinematic, Chris Metzen really wanted to do a feature showing the titans creating the world, which was shot down to instead focus on the various races and classes of the game. The first expansion was going to be the South Seas, with pirates and stuff, because that's also when the Pirates of the Caribbean movies came out for the first time and were super popular. The main reason they went to Outlands instead was because they needed another world tap, because they literally couldn't add more zones to the world map, until later on when they got server upgrades. And we didn't actually get the South Seas expansion until 2018, with the Battle for Azeroth. Player housing was on the table since pretty much the beginning of WoW's development, all the way until launch and probably for some time after. But some of the reasons they decided not to have it in Vanilla WoW was because they thought it was too much time and effort for something that wasn't really important, and because they thought it was a dead-end system, and they couldn't find a way to make it fun. Whatever that means. But there is also confirmation that the unused portal in Stormwind, from pre cata WoW, was indeed supposed to take you to your player housing. There were three additional planned races for Vanilla WoW, with Naga, Goblins, and Demons being cut from the game. Naga because there was too many problems with them when it came to armor, as pants and boots wouldn't work with their snake-like tails, and sitting them on mounts was a challenge. Demons were supposed to be shapeshifters, but that would require too much work to implement, so it was easier to just cut them out of the game. And goblins were cut because they wanted the starting zone to be amazing and have all kinds of machines and gizmos, but they wouldn't be able to reuse all that they had planned so it would be too much work to have all of those things created for just one zone, so they were put on hold until Cataclysm instead. Ogres were also considered for a playable race for a short time, but no one could think of a good model for female ogres, so instead of solving that problem, it was just dropped. Plus, the Horde already had Torin as a big race, and they didn't want to give them two of them, as ogres have historically been part of the Horde. Alteric Valley was the first battleground Blizzard worked on, but it wasn't ready in time for launch, so it was pushed back into a later patch and released alongside Warsan Gulch. Achievements were planned to be part of Vanilla WoW, but were put on hold alongside PvP, hero classes, multi-classes, guild raid content, and player housing. As PvP wasn't balanced for WoW's launch, it was considered put on hold, along with any kind of reward systems for PvP which weren't added until later patches. Hero classes were tried with Death Knights and quickly abandoned for being too overpowered. Multi-classes never happened, alongside guild raids and player housing. When putting fishing into the game, they were nervous that hackers could use it to disrupt the economy, as it was the only activity in the game which gave rewards that could be performed without risk. That's why they also added the little mini-game of clicking the bobber when you caught something, in order to make it harder for hackers to automate. Deadmines was one of the first playable dungeons, and the devs liked it enough to use it as a benchmark for how long other dungeons should be, and that high-level dungeons should be longer than it. Blizzard made sure their high-level dungeons were the biggest, 
That's why in future versions of the game, they cut those old high level dungeons into parts when putting them into the LFG tool, as they were too big. After the launch of the game, players liked the small quick dungeons the best, like the different wings of the Scarlet Monastery. And that's why Blizzard went with the quicker, smaller dungeons as the game progressed, instead of continuing with the large, complex, exploratory dungeons that they used to have. When it came to raids, they were told to make them even bigger than the already big high-level dungeons. So after working on Karazhan, one of the first raids worked on despite not being released until the Burning Crusade, they made it too big and had to cut back on it a lot. And that's probably why the Karazhan crypts were never made use of. The book doesn't specify the crypts by name, but it does say they had to completely cut the wine cellars and the undead catacombs part of Karazhan. Late in WoW's development, the talent trees were added as a fun way to gain power as you leveled up. Before, they had a system that allowed you to spend points into various stats, but no matter what they did to make fun, alternative stats, people would always just spend all of their points into the best ones. So warriors would only put points into strength, and mages only into intellect, which ended up not being very fun. So they were scrapped, and the talent trees were added instead. And that's probably why so many specs were useless in Vanilla WoW. They were more or less leveling up rewards, not really balanced around endgame content, and didn't receive major overhauls until almost halfway through Vanilla when they decided to address one class at a time each patch. The Plaguelands and Silithus were the last two zones worked on that made it into the game, which might explain why Silithus was empty at launch. The last zone being worked on before Vanilla WoW launched was the Emerald Dream, which was eventually just scrapped as they weren't happy with how it turned out. They wanted it to be this dreamlike place where anything could happen, but it ended up just looking kind of goofy and really green, so they abandoned the idea as it was too hard to realize. The Emerald Dream was never actually added as a zone at all, despite its major lore relevance, but it did make it into the game in other ways, as part of it can be entered in the Emerald Nightmare and the Druid Order Hall. The death effects of the world going all grey and spooky were added after the dev team saw the Lord of the Rings movie, and liked how the effect was used in the movie. Vehicles were planned to be a feature in vanilla PvP, but they couldn't figure out a way to make it work. Vehicle combat didn't make it into the game until Wrath, when it was used for three battlegrounds, and then never used in a battleground afterwards, since people didn't actually like vehicle combat very much. The Horde snuff was worked on last, so it didn't receive anywhere near as much polish as the Alliance zones, and even had less content in some areas. On screen, you can see a copy I made of one of the earliest maps of Azeroth made, because the image in the book was really low quality and hard to see, while still in the planning stages of WoW before anything else was made. The first biggest thing that stands out is the giant continent of Ulduar below a quarter-sized Kalimdor. Ulduar was eventually turned into a raid in Northrend during Wrath of the Lich King, and is located at this point on the map. But, it seems like Blizzard might have had some much bigger plans for it. Kalimdor was also about one-fourth the size in this version than it was in the final map, but then again, Ulduar was down there taking up all its space, so that makes sense. Najjatar, the Naga homeworld, was in the middle of the map instead of the Maelstrom, which was oddly off to the side, in between the Undermine and Tomb of Sargeras. The Undermine is the name of the underground city below the Goblin starting zone of Kazan. And finally, Kul Taras was a much smaller island nation in the bay between Azeroth and Lordaeron, as Kul Taras has always been an important island in lore, even though we didn't actually go there until very recently in game. And of course, the Eastern Kingdoms was known as Azeroth before it was changed to the name of the whole planet, but everyone already knew that. The Molten Core raid was created really late in development as kind of an afterthought. One day, they asked the dungeon designer if he could make a quick raid, as simple as possible, because they needed it ASAP, and players, sadly, didn't really care about how it would look. They just needed a big cave. So, Molten Core was created in one week, the fastest of any dungeon or raid in the game, 
and players universally loved it and its design. In fact, Molten Core was also the smallest dungeon file, one-fourth the size of the second smallest dungeon, despite being a raid. When testing Molten Core with a raid of devs, they couldn't get past the trash without wiping multiple times. It's not that the trash was overtuned or anything, it's just everyone was really bad, so Molten Core was the first and last raid tested in-house by developers. Also, as a side note, while they were testing Molten Core, they used player-created DPS meter add-ons to measure their combat numbers, rather than make one of their own. Alright, and that's the end of the video. All of this information comes from an early copy of a book called The WoW Diary that I received. A book written by a dungeon designer who worked on Vanilla WoW that goes over a lot of what happens in WoW's development. It's a really good read on what went into making the game. And if you want to read it for yourself, I'll have a link to the Kickstarter for the book in the video description, or a link to the book itself if you're watching this in the future.